In this video, I'll be showing you my functional disk key replica. The special thing about this one is that this was directly modeled and printed from the original MIT Instrumentation Labs drawings. So a quick recap, the disk key was the man-machine interface used to interact with the Apollo guidance computer. So that was the one that we used in the Apollo program, which took several people to the moon. This was inside the command module and lunar module and was used basically for all guidance aspects of the mission. Let's get into it. I'll start by showing you what it actually does. As you can see, there's a cable coming from the back of it that is for power. And it is currently running virtual AGC, which was developed by Ron Berkey. So his software is freely available over his website, which I link in the description. So virtual AGC is an exact emulator of the original Apollo guidance computer. I loaded up uh, command uh, 55, uh, which is the software used inside the command module during the Apollo 11 mission. Right now it's just idling and I can make a quick command verb 35 enter, which is a basic lamp test, will, which will turn all the indicators and segments on and then turn them off. I am by no means an expert in this field uh, of operating the actual AGC and I can't really do much more software wise. I do have plans of hooking this up to a flight simulator and use it to fly an Apollo mission. So that would be Orbiter plus an ASSP. A year and a half ago, Ron Berkey, so the main developer of the virtual AGC software, as I mentioned earlier, started the tedious work of scanning and referencing aperture cards from the US National Archives. So those contains almost all electrical and mechanical drawings of the Apollo guidance computer subsystem. Every little part, screw, holder, wire, connector has its own drawing. This allowed me to module the main, the main parts of the disk key. They have been added to virtual AGC's repo. So you can also take them, use them as you want. And the process could took quite some time as some of the drawings were intricate overlapping lines made some dimensions hard to understand. So what I did afterwards is I took some of the drawings and modified them to uh, accommodate them to uh, 3D printing. So I widened some hole to put uh, threaded inserts, uh, hollowed out the main housing to insert a Raspberry Pi. Um, the front housing was also modified um, to uh, insert my, uh, my custom uh, keyboard. So this was all 3D printed afterwards. And as you can see, it did fit pretty well. So that was on the first go. So I'm really happy I did not have to modify much more of the files after printing it. So what I'll do right now is I'll disconnect the disk key, um, pause the camera and unscrew the front cover so we can actually see and look uh, what's inside of this. Let's start by removing the front cover and take some time to look at it because this um, has not been modified from the original drawing. So I just printed it as is and you can see it's a pretty thin part uh, for plastic and it's very rigid. So I do like all the features and reinforcing ribs that were designed originally for die cast aluminum, but still really help uh, making this part very strong for a PLA. 3D printed parts. Back to the disk key itself, there's the custom designed keyboard I made. So I had to modify uh, the front housing slightly for accommodate, to accommodate for that. And they use blue Cherry MX keys wired uh, in, in a custom matrix. So I hand wired everything with the diodes to avoid uh, ghosting. Uh, each keycap has a recess to match with the cross shape on the switch itself. And they just line up and are press fit together. They work pretty well. And I would like to reprint the keycaps because um, the bigger ones are okay, but uh, the smaller text features sometimes are not readable. So I'd like to remake that at some point. Status lights are simple LEDs behind a simple sheet of paper. The alarm lights are orange, status lights are white. Uh, the display is an next iron 4.3 inch model with a custom UI I designed from MIT specs. Both are um, controlled by an 80 mega 328 controller, uh, which is a simple Arduino Nano. And uh, the um, keyboard has a second uh, 80 mega 32U4, which acts as a USB keyboard and scans the matrix for key presses. 
On the back here, you've got several features. You've got here uh, this nozzle, which was used to originally pressurize the whole disc with nitrogen to limit fire hazards. And you've got the multi-pin connector with a red cover I installed. And this is a pretty ironic fact because I sadly was not able to find um, an original part to match the disc key. So I used this thing, which is new old stock from straight from USSR. I'll remove the back cover here and we can see the rat's nest behind. So there you have it. The Raspberry Pi is running a basic Raspbian distribution in which I built and installed virtual AGC and a Python script communicates with the virtual AGC emulator uh, through a simple TCP port and it sends the key presses from the keyboard to the AGC and retrieves the display and indicator contents and you can see both Arduinos here. I am really happy about how this all turned out. The features are pretty well defined. I like how the emulator works and how it looks, generally speaking. However, there are still some things I'd like to address and maybe make a second revision of this disk key. First of all are the inserts. So they're generic brass inserts I bought from eBay and I simply press fit them inside the part with a jig. Uh, this worked out okay most of the times, but it did cause some cracking in some parts, as you can see here. I think I'll find better quality inserts next time and use heat setting, which should result in an overall cleaner aspect. The, clean, the keyboard could also use some work. It works also pretty nicely, but the keycaps rub against the walls of the cover, so you may, might have heard that in the intro. So I think by sanding them smooth, this should improve things uh, dramatically. And I'm also looking into reproducing the original uh, switches, but this is still a work in progress. The outside finish is something you would expect from a 3D printed parts. You can actually see the layering, but I'd like to try my hand at priming and painting the external parts to get a nice finish. Status lights are also in my list, so right now they're using LEDs, which makes a bright spot in the middle, but I like to use diffusers to make them smoother. Maybe switch to light bulbs, maybe. Um, same thing for the display. It does lag behind sometimes because this is linked to the way I designed this. I use here an X-Tion display to the ATmega328, to the Python script, then to the virtual AGC emulator, so that's a lot of steps. and it dramatically slows down the displaying of the re registers here. Um, so I think I'll remove as many intermediaries as I can. And I'm also looking into other ways to make an accurate display, including recreating the EL panel. So I strongly invite you to look at Applied Sciences uh, video if you're interested. So he recreated an original EL panel. His work is absolutely amazing. I'm also looking into making custom seven segment displays, but this is also a work in progress. The external connector also looks okay, um, but I think I'll, I'll spend more time searching for an accurate part. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, if you'd like to recreate this or got any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below.